everybody and welcome back to Sky Bees. And in this episode, we set up a tree farm, runic altar automation, and ether gas production. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so today we are going to be setting up a tree farm and we're also going to be automating Botania Runic Altar Crafting. Because we're going to need that if we're going to be setting up the Mycelial Generators later on. Because we're going to need to automate simple machine frames, automate the advanced ones, and maybe even automate one or two supreme machine frames. Meaning we're also going to have to set up a wither farm for ether gas. And we'll do that at the start of next episode before we go ahead and set up the whole system for auto crafting using the dissolution chambers. So uh, let me just quickly sleep here. And uh, so what I've done over here is I have prepared a bit of an area. I've already done all the wiring underneath, which is the most tedious part. So everything's going to get power and an import cable. And yeah, so pretty much all I want to do is right here. I forgot. I'm actually going to have to break two parts here because I have to run a power cable up this way. Oh, maybe I should have run the power cable differently. But what's going to happen is we're going to have an importer uh, here so we can import in the logs that get harvested. And I need to modify this plot right here. So this is where I'm going to be planting spruce. I want to try and get this done quite quick because it's only very simple and it won't take that much, that too long. So here, what I want to do is using the cobblestone bricks that I somehow managed to pick up, just need to fill in all of these holes. So by doing this, this will stop spruce trees from growing the mega spruce trees. So just put this here. There we go. So I've already gone ahead and made the eight machine frames we're going to need. Um, so what we want to do is make ourselves four plant sowers. So one, two, three, four. And four plant gatherers. So one, two, three, and four. And you might have noticed in my inventory, I've already got all the speed and range upgrades. They took a while to craft. So all I have to do then is just grab some cable. Ultimate Universal Cable. I'm quite low. I've set up auto craft for this cable now, so it should be easy to craft out a bunch of it very quick. There we go. A whole 64. All I got to do is break the slab here and then just run this up like that. And then we'll be able to give the harvester some power. All right. So the plant gatherer, I believe, faces this way. So I'll just fly a bit and place them all down one by one. There we go. Now I need to grab myself some import cable. So import and a little bit of cable just to make sure. And I'm just going to put the import cable there. So this will be importing in the logs and the saplings and everything that it harvests. So hook these all up like so. There we go. That's it. I probably should add speed upgrades onto each one of those now as well. But let's give all these guys the range and speed upgrades now. So just I lay them out so it's easy. Just install them like so and now for the plant sowers if we come underneath here we just need to put them down like this and now we just give these guys the speed and range upgrades too now we need export cable or exporters i think i'm low on exporters again let's see how many we can make 19 maximum okay so exporters are going to go on like this okay now the saplings i want to plant we have a look here at saplings is oak spruce dark oak and birch i don't need to worry about acacia because i have a botany pod growing acacia making the latex um right there behind that wall and we don't need jungle oak because i haven't used that at all so here is going to be spruce so you'll export that spruce here i'm going to do dark oak oops i meant to actually put this in the exporter so yeah sure you can take that you are going to take birch and you are going to take oak. So all I have to do now is just grab speed upgrades. Should have plenty of them. And I just need to max these guys out with speed upgrades. All right, there we go. And I probably should do that same for these guys too. Just so the input into the system a lot quicker and it doesn't get clogged up. Now the last thing to do is just grab ourselves some fluid trash cans and put these on top. So now any sludge that is gathered by harvesting... It will just destroy it like it does for these plant gatherers. So all I have to do is sludge, just say push out the top. And that's it. Now once I sprint around, it should grow all the trees. And we'll be able to see them get harvested. Okay, I don't know why I was acting kind of weird there. Character just wouldn't move. 
So yeah, you can see everything's been harvested now. And this way we'll just get infinite wood, which is exactly what I want since I've been so low on wood for a while. And if I really want to out max out our plank production, we can probably put an export or a dim chest or something here and just set it to make us planks or something. If we wanted to, we don't necessarily have to do that now. So Botania, let's get working on this over here. So what we need to do is grab this runic altar and I'm going to put it over here. The runic altar is going to go there. I need myself a crafter. The refined storage crafter. What am I out of right now? Construction course. That's glowstone. Right. I need to go make a few more of those. Because right now I'm just infinitely crafting all of these guys. Because I have like crafter upgrades and everything being pumped out. These raw processor parts. Uh, it looks like we're actually kind of running out of those ones. Um, but what I need to do is swap out the redstone here with the glowstone so it makes some of the construction cores. Now if I look up a crafter, I should be able to craft it. There we go. So next thing for me to do is actually set up some of the patterns that we're going to need. So if we go to machine frame, this is how it's crafted. So it lays it out like that. But if we just grab like our iron, so one, two, three, four. Just lay it out like this. So for iron, we need ourselves a redstone block. So one redstone block. Now we need ourselves some logs. Set this up to a four. And then we just need one living rock. So laid out like this, one living rock. So four iron, four logs, one redstone, and one living rock makes a pity machine frame. That's all we need. Then we're going to need ourselves the open crate. I made myself one of those. So an open crate, we're going to need a dispenser. Uh, I have a few dispensers. We're going to need some comparators. So a comparator, a repeater. We're probably going to need another repeater. Uh, oh, this is not the crafting one. A uh, repeater, there we go. And we're probably going to need a little bit of redstone. And we're also going to require a redstone transmitter and receiver. So RF tools. Uh, we have two here. I, what channels are these on? Five? You know what? They should work. As long as nothing else is connected to channel 5, we should be okay. I actually don't know if there anything is. Maybe we are better off making two fresh ones. So this is a transmitter and this is the receiver. Put those two away and so we have two fresh ones. Okay. So off of the runic altar, comparator coming off. This will tell it to give a redstone signal when it needs it. Then I'm going to grab myself a bit of redstone. And that's going to come like this. I'm going to put a repeater right here. I'm going to grab a dispenser and point it in to the runic altar. Now I need to grab myself my wand of the forest. So wand and stick the wand in here. So now when this thing gets a redstone signal, it will use it. And the only way this thing is going to get a redstone signal is when it starts crafting something. So we'll have to jumpstart it with something first. So I need to give it mana now. So I think... I wonder, should I upgrade the, what's it called, the mana spreaders here? I could upgrade it to the next tier using the dream wood. Let me grab out some living wood. 64 of it and chuck it into this portal here. And we should give back 64 dream wood. And then we can upgrade our spreaders. Unfortunately, we can't go as far as Gaia because, of course, we haven't actually fought the Gaia spirit yet. Which I don't actually know what we need to or at all. But two elven mana spreaders should do the job. So break these two here. Okay, and now we're just going to put them back. And make sure that these guys are hooked up to the right one. They are. So you point into him. And you into him. And I'll also then set up another mana spreader. So one quick elven mana spreader. And I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to point it like that. That way, from the mana pool, it'll also be getting a burst of mana. So that's pretty much it for that. So now what I need to do is grab some building blocks. So some cobblestone. Put it on top here. Build up one more. And build up another one. So from here, I'm going to put the open crate. Should I put a chest, actually? Maybe I should use a chest. I wasn't, I'm not sure exactly do I want to pump in straight into this thing. Maybe a chest would be the best option because an open crate is going to go there. Maybe then I should put the chest. Let me grab a logistical pipe. 
I mean, even a hopper would work. Let's grab out a hopper. So, hopper. You're going to go there. Chest is going to go on top. Crafter is going to point into this. I need my wrench. Did I actually ever make a wrench for this thing? No, I didn't. Uh, there you go. Point you into the chest. There we go. Now, the pattern that we've made will go in there. And that's pretty much it then. So, all I need to do is grab a wireless network from refined storage. So, refined storage. I need a network card. I'm going to need a network transmitter. And receiver. The receiver, I can just probably throw on top of this thing. Because it's connected to it by touching it. Grab this and fly over and hook it up. And I'll just stick it there. We fly back over here now. We can see this is connected and this is all turned on. The only thing we need to do now is tell this thing to only work when there's a redstone pulse. Then we're just going to put a block right here. Grab the transmitter. And off of it here, the redstone signal is going to go in. Then it's going to say redstone receiver. Make sure we link the channels. Point it in the way. And I think... I think that's it then. So what happens then if I grab myself... Oh, maybe I shouldn't put it there. Yeah, okay, hang on. I remember now. I think I have to put it like here. Or something. Because... if we, Let me just demonstrate this. So, let's say machine frame now. We want to craft one. Maybe even two. It will dump the items, the first set of items, into the chest here. This gives off a weak redstone signal, right? So maybe I should put the transmitter here. So, oops, uh, just put this back in there. So what happens then is when it fully crafts and all the mana fills up, it will send out a stronger redstone signal, activating this one, activating the dispenser, and then it should activate this one, letting the crafter know to import the next set of materials. So it's almost done now, and I don't know if these mana spreaders are even going to cut it. Maybe I should set up a new set of mana production, like right here, a small one for it. But you can see it's almost done. And it activates, and it sends in the next set. There we go, and then it starts crafting the next one. The only thing we need to do now is grab ourselves an item collector. Basic one will do. A dim chest. And I just need to put the dim chest right here, set it to frequency 100, and say basic item collector, go here. Oh, I need the advanced one, I'd say, because uh, that one doesn't have the filter items. The advanced one, put you there, and say whitelist only a pity machine frame. And I know it sucked up the living rock, so I'm going to have to put a new one down. Yeah, see, it sent out the redstone signal, but I need to just break this, put it back down, and off it goes. And it sucked it up, and that's it. There we go. Automated. Actually, wait, let me clear this up a little bit more by putting it here. That way, everything is so compact, it's only two blocks wide, and like, what, four or five blocks tall. There's Botania auto-crafting. Damn, we actually got this done very quick. Uh, we have a tree farm and automated botania production within like 20 minutes. Or maybe even 15 minutes. Um, well, you know what we can do then? Let's actually set up the wither then. I was going to save it for next episode. Let's set it up now. So I want to do it up here. So I want to grab out my quantum stable bedrock. So we can set up the wither to be inside this block, block and not move. The other thing we're going to need is a stasis chamber. And you are going to require the advanced one. So we are going to have to manually craft an advanced machine frame first. So let's jump down here and actually have a look what we need to do. We're going to need laser drills, which are simple ones, which is just plastic, pity machine frames, iron, and gold gears. Now, the pity machine frames, they're going to take a while to craft if I need to craft, like, I don't know, four of them. So let's actually have a look. So Stasius Chamber is made like this. So simple. We need to make this. So plastic. So plastic, we need brick, we're going to need iron, and a gold gear. Do I have any gold gears? I should have. Yeah, I do. Now we're going to need the machine frame. So machine frame, craft me up 10. I know that might take a while, but at least we'll have one or two ready to go. 
I need to put machine frame, gold gear, iron, brick, and plastic. Lock the input for a moment. Then in here, I need scrap. That's the only other thing. I don't believe we have any scrap. How are we going to get scrap? I know we get it by sieving crushed netherrack. And the only way to get crushed netherrack is by hammering it manually. So what if I grab netherrack? Grab myself a hammer. Actually, I think compressed hammer, uh, compressing it works. Oh, you can't compress this stuff. Okay, never mind. So I guess we'll have to build a small wall of this and then just hammer it down. And I don't believe anything is using scrap at the moment, so this should just work. All right, last bit of the netherrack going in. How much scrap have we made now? Okay, 60 of it. That should be more than enough. So back over to this guy. So the next tier one was the advanced. That's gold, diamond, and plastic. Okay, so diamond gears, gold ingots, diamond gears. Okay, so diamond gears in the bottom. Is it just one? I think it's just one gold diamond gear in it. Then gold, scrap, plastic, and then the actual simple machine frame. That in there, lock the input method, and there's no speed upgrades in this guy, so maybe I should make a few. But at least now we can craft up a couple of these now. I need at least five of them to be able, or six of them in total. So we'll just have to wait for like six of these things to craft. Okay, I realized I actually only needed two advanced machine frames. I made a tree, so I ended up making another simple machine frame. So we should be able to make everything now. So laser drills, made like this, we need four of them. Perfect. The advanced machine frames now are used to make a stasis chamber. Our fluid laser base. Like so. And the extra one can do whatever. Uh, maybe we can even use it for starting to work on these extra micellar generators later on. It won't go to waste anyway. So, guess that get our quantum stable bedrock. We're going to need a redstone torch to activate it now. And I'm not even going to bother trying to use witherproof glass. Wait, do we even have witherproof glass? I believe we do actually. But I'm not going to probably work on making it. Dark glass. Let me just look up wither. Yeah, there's this tempered glass, explosion and wither blasts, which requires witherproof glass, which requires witherproof block, which is steel scaffolding and wither skeleton. I mean, we could do it if we want to see the wither. Not that I necessarily want to see the wither. Um, damn, I actually don't know where I not want to want to see the wither or not now. You know, what? we'll we'll have a look at them. How much of this can I make? Not much. Steel scaffolding. How many of that can I make? I can make quite a bit. Uh, I won't need too much. Just like a stack or so. Yeah, that'll do. And I'll throw it into the smelting thing down here. You should get it up really quick. Oh, wait. Oh, but I can only blast it. Oh, that's annoying. Do I even have a blast furnace? I should do somewhere. There it is. Great, we're going to have to sit here and wait for this to smelt. In the meantime, let's actually go set up the, the area for him. So up here, I want to do it up here because out of the way of everything. And right on the edge, should I include it into the roof? Maybe I should just to, so it doesn't look like it's sticking off of anything. Let's turn it into small square and we'll start off with the center piece. And the center is right here. This will stop anything from spawning for the moment, but I'm not too worried about that. So say the wither is going to spawn right here. We need to come out one more row like this. So we'll always have one block up block around him. Okay, so we'll have a square, something like this. So he'll be sitting in the center here. Oh, wait, I need to put a stasis chamber under him. Will it matter if the stasis chamber is just sitting in the middle here? I wouldn't see why it wouldn't. It's not going to hinder or block anything from passing past it. So I think it should be fine. Now we need to build up and make sure I don't say, make the same mistake I did before. I need to make sure that he has enough room to float up and not through a block. And this should definitely be tall enough. So he's going to be three blocks tall. And when he spawns, he'll go up one and he'll get hit by the ceiling. He shouldn't be able to fly out. Even still, so he won't do the explosion animation as long as he's locked within the stasis chamber. So I need to find break this block here. And now just get a few building blocks. I can't, of 
course, I can't reach it from there. Should be able to reach it from here. There. Stasis chamber. Now I need to grab myself a point. Oh, I can't reach it from here. Okay. Break this cobblestone. Put a point on the back. And now if we show the area, you can see it does this entire spot. And just break this corner piece just to get out. So it includes all of that. Oh. I could have swore I'd done a lot more than that. But as long as you're within it, uh, if I touch that right now, I'm going to get stuck. So I'm not going to touch it. I can put this back and it should be good to go. Can I just reach in to turn off the area? Yes. Oh, I hope this actually holds him because if he doesn't, we're going to have a bit of an issue. And he should be able to destroy anything anyway because the area is claimed. And I just noticed there my farm is not necessarily claimed. Yeah. So all I have to do now is just wait for all those tempered witherproof blocks to spawn. Now, the other thing is um, I need to put this drill on top. So the drill is going to go here and we're going to have laser bases. Now, do they face the way I'm looking? Yes, they do. So they're going to go like this. Okay. Now we need to come back down here and I need to grab myself a quantum tank. I want to use a quantum tank mainly because of its storage size and the fact that if we ever fill up this thing, it, I, I don't even know how we did manage to fill this thing up. It'll be take forever. So there's one other thing I need to do before we can spawn the wither is if we look at ether, if we go to like this guy, ether gas requires a purple laser lens. That is purple dye and three or four glass panes. So one, two, three, four and purple. Should have some purple dye. I do. And we should be able to just put these in there. Make us our purple laser lens. And that's pretty much it then. So what are we waiting on right now? Just the witherproof glass. How much has it smelted? Six, six, and six. All right, let's go actually have a look at what way this is. Do we prefer this kind of glass or do we prefer the other one? So this is nearly transparent. And can I turn it back? Okay, I can do it back and forth. And this glass looks like this. Yikes, it's not a connected texture, so we'll stick with the other glass. Oh, it breaks instantly, though. Where this glass is... Oh, I stood inside the Stasius chamber. What do I do? Um, Run with redstone signal. Okay, there we go. I'll have to remember to change that before I... Well, spawn in the wither. Uh, actually, I need my quantum block back because there's a hole there. Right, there we go. Now, is this enough glass or do I need a little bit more? Nope, it's enough. So that's pretty much it then. The only thing I need to do now is break this for a moment and dig my way in. Oh, actually, yeah, I'll have to dig my way in anyway to be able to spawn the wither. I'm going to break this block here so I can actually access the Stasis chamber and tell it to turn. Let's do without a redstone signal for a moment. I'll turn it on as soon as I spawn the wither. So I think it's about time we actually spawn them. So let's grab ourselves our soul sand. We're going to need the skulls now. Skulls, 400k of them. Wow. And just get ready to turn this back into solid. So soul sand in. Please do not escape. Turn this into a solid. Now I need to come down here and turn back on the stasis chamber. Redstone mode ignored. And he froze. You can see the flashing stopped. It means that the Stasius chamber has prevented him from spawning. And he is not going anywhere as long as the Stasius chamber is provided with power. There we go. The winner is captured. Only thing left to do now is grab another point. Grab some cable. Grab a fluid cable. So pipe. And our tank. Which I think I'll put away. Nothing in this tank? Nope. So, mechanical pipe will go on top here. This will go here. You get the laser lens. And universal cable now will just connect everything like this. And, you know what? I'll just run up to make it, like, look neater. Kind of look like it, the cable's encasing everything. And I'll put the point on top and set sky power. 
So if we look in here now, it is slowly progressing. And if we notice any ether gas in here, we've done it correctly. Almost done. Nothing. Maybe it didn't do it this time. Unless, like, I, I, there could be a thing where it needs to have an open block underneath it to be able to access him. I don't think so, though. Unless it's too high. Because if it's too high, that's going to be so annoying. Please don't say you're too high. Oh, no. I'm going to have to break the top layer off. But you're still too low. I won't be able to even put a block there. No, that this should work anyway. Come on. Maybe it's just have the wrong range or something. Min, max, any, none. He's too high up. Uh, maybe I should get in there and fight the wither. And kill him. I think I'll have to kill the wither. He shouldn't be able to escape anyway, so let me just grab out my redstone torch and fix this. Alright, he didn't actually take that long to take out. All I need to do now is break all this and move it down one block. So let me just quickly do that. Okay, it's all moved down. I decided to get rid of the pipe. I just have the drill auto push up into the actual tank. So... Right now, there's no wither, so I've got everything to spawn him in again. So, the only thing is I have to activate the Stasis Chamber straight away. Um, Actually, I should be able to do it right now. So, Redstone Signal ignored, and I should be able to reach in here and do this. Now, just put down the next two. Redstone Torch it. There we go. Nothing should happen. Shouldn't be explode or escape, because you are stuck by the Stasis Chamber. Correct? I feel like he would have exploded by now, so I think we're okay. And looking inside here, there is 10 millibuckets of ether gas, so it was just one block too high. So there we go, we have production of ether gas. Uh, I just need some torches now. Uh, just to make sure everything's lit up up here, and we should be good to go. Perfect. Now, the only thing I'm noticing about having the wither up here is the dimming of the lighting in the area and the constant wither bar across the top of my screen. As you can see, everything is really, like, dimmed, which is kind of annoying. I don't know if there's a way to get rid of that without having a wither here. If I really feel like and I don't like it, I might move the wither into the mining dimension. That might be a better alternative. We'll see. Well, I'm going to end it there. Hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Hope to see you on the next episode. So without further ado, goodbye.